اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ علی صلاۃ وسلام علی رسول ہی و صحب ہی اجمعین ربش رحلی صدری و یسر علی عمری وحل العقدت من لسانی یفقہ قولی السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ My name is Farah and today inshallah we will study the 17th chapter of the glorious Quran Surah Al-Isra also known as Surah Bani Israel. Surah has 111 verses and it was revealed in Mecca after the night journey of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to Isra and Miraj which took place before the migration to Medina. Surah also talks about the children of Israel and therefore it is known by two names Al-Isra and Bani Israel. Like other Makki Surahs, Surah talks about the oneness of Allah, prophethood, life after death and it also narrates the end of previous nations. Surah tells us that human beings are honored beings and they need guidance for a peaceful life in this world and a successful hereafter. Quran provides this guidance. Surah contains around 20 very clear and comprehensive commandments for spiritual and moral development of man's character. Verse 78 mentions the gift Prophet ﷺ brought for Muslims and it is to perform five daily obligatory salah. In the last section, Surah says that the people of knowledge recognize the truth of Quran and they fall down in prostration. Verse 109 is a verse of sajda, that is prostration, so please do not forget to perform sajda. Surah ends on the concept of Tawheed, saying that Allah does not or hasn't begotten a son and we must magnify his greatness and magnificence. Allahu Akbar. So let's begin. Let's talk about the important points of Surah Al-Isra. Surah begins by saying, Subhan al glorified is he who took his slave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a journey by night from Al-Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa, the blessed land, so he could show him the signs. Verse 60 also talks about the night journey. Then Surah talks about the previous prophets. Verses from 2 to 8, Allah says, We gave Moses the scripture and made it guidance for the children of Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored them, but they became arrogant. Verse 3 says, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam was a very grateful slave of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him in the ship. Surah also talks about Prophet Dawood and Sali alayhi salam. Verses 61 to 64 describes the famous dialogue between Allah and Iblis, where Iblis the cursed one refused to prostrate to Adam because of his arrogance and he asked Allah for respite till the day of resurrection so he could mislead mankind. Verses 72 to 77 tells that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam steadfast against the disbelievers. Allah commanded him to perform salat e tahajjud and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could raise him to maqam e mahmood a place of a station of praise and glory, the honor of intercession on the day of resurrection. Verses 90 to 96 talks about the common reaction of people. When the messengers came to them, they denied their teachings. They asked for miracles. They said, has Allah sent a man as a messenger? Say, if there were on the earth angels walking, walking about, we should certainly have sent down for them an angel as a messenger. The surah has many beautiful verses about the glorious Quran. Verse 9 says, Verily, Quran al hakim guides to that which is most just and right and gives glad tidings to the believers. Verse 41 onward it says, And surely we have explained our promises and warnings in this Quran that they may take heed. Quran is a mercy. Quran is a shifa and provides protection against enemies. Quran is Allah's book and if men and jinn get together and they try to produce one like it, they will not be able to produce it. 
verses 105 and 105 to 107 says quran is haq and came with haq that is truth and it came in came in stages there are various verses which talks about the nature of man allah says in verse 11 in verses 11 and onward that man is hasty in nature then it says every single one of us is writing their book of deeds and at the day of judgment it will be said read your book allah says whoever among you desires the life of this world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him but the righteous people work for akhirah surah tells us man is ungrateful and remember and he only remembers allah in pain and misery then there is a list of commandments from verses 23 to 39 and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching hikmah and wisdom to mankind because satan will have no authority over the true believers we will discuss those um, uh, commandments in our next section inshallah there are various verses in the surah about the creator allah azza wa jal he has appointed the night and the day as two signs he subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for everyone including believers and disbelievers it says worship allah alone allah is one and all the creation glorify him he is the one who makes you drive ships so you may seek his bounty verse 97 guidance comes only from allah to those who seek guidance in verses 22 and 39 there is a same message it says la taj'al ma allah ilahan and do not set up with allah any other ilah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not taken angels as daughters na'uz billah they call upon son of maryam they call upon uzair and angels beside allah but they whom they call fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yaquluna uluwan kabira verse 43 says glorified is he high above the great falsehood that they say he is allah the one the self sufficient he begets not nor he is begotten and there is no one like him surah warns us about the tactics of satan verses 62 to 64 iblis said oh allah you have honored him above me and if you give me respite till the day of resurrection i will surely mislead his offsprings and befool them gradually with evil voices that is music or any other calls for allah's disobedience also through their wealth through their children by tempting them to earn money by illegal ways and by committing illegal shameful acts may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the tactics of satan amen verse 70 a great verse and a motivation to mankind allah says we have honored the children of adam and we have provided them with tayyibat and we have preferred them so we must act honorably verses 49 to 52 talks about the resurrection and they say it says they say when we are born should we really be resurrected who shall bring us bring bring us back to life when will that be say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he who has created you first he will create you again and perhaps it is near verses 97 to 98 on the day of resurrection the disbelievers will come on their faces blind dumb and deaf that is their recompense because they denied our verses verse 85 it answers the question asked to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the ruh what is ruh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is one of the thing the knowledge is only with allah mankind has been given a very little knowledge about it the last two verses of surah begins with the word kul which means say say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam invoke allah or invoke ar-rahman 
to him belong the best names his is all praise and he has not begotten a son magnify his magnificence allahu akbar virtues and benefits narrated by aisha radiyallahu anha and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not sleep until he recited surah al-isra and surah az-zumr narrated abu huraira the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw a man troubled with sickness and told him to say tawakkaltu ala al-hajj allazi la yamutu and the last uh, verse of surah al-isra the man revisited the prophet and he was in good health and told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he always recites these words prophet peace be upon him told azat ali that the last two verses of surah al-isra are a protection from theft and whoever recites these words before sleeping the devils and insects will not be able to harm him let's move on to our story section quran provides protection verse 45 says when you O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam recite the Quran we put a veil between you and your enemies it is narrated um, with regard to this verse in the book of tafsir by Said ibn Jubair may Allah be pleased with him that surah number when surah number 111 surah lahab was revealed the wife of abu lahab came looking for the prophet while abu bakr was sitting beside him abu bakr said to the prophet i wish if you get a sight as she is coming and i feel she may harm you the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there will be a screen set between me and her so she didn't see him she said to abu bakr your companion is saying poetry against me abu bakr said by allah he does not say poetry she said do you believe that then she left abu bakar said oh allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam she didn't see you the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said an angel was screening me from her it is also said that if the above verse is recited by a real believer he will be screened from a disbeliever subhanallah our next story allah subhanahu wa taala the true savior With regard to verse 67 Ibn Kathir said in his book of Tafsir that when Makkah was conquered Ikrama ibn Abi Jahl fled from Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he was sailing away a heavy stormy wind overtook their boat and huge waves came to them from all sides and they thought they are encircled therein then the people of the boat said to one another No one can save you except Allah the only true god of heavens and earth so invoke him alone to deliver you safe Ikrama said to himself by Allah if none can benefit in the sea except Allah then no doubt none can benefit over the land except Allah true O oh Allah I promise you that if you deliver me safe from this I will go and put my hands in the hands of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and surely i will find him full of kindness and mercy so they were delivered safe and came out of the sea ikrama then went to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated his story embraced islam and he became a perfect muslim our next story maqam e mahmud and tahajjud salah verse 79 allah subhanahu wa taala says to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in some parts of the night offer salat tahajjud and allah will raise you to maqam e mahmud narrated abu said al qudri radiyallahu anhu that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i am the chief of the children of adam on the day of judgment and i am not boasting he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the people will be frightened by three frights so they will come to adam alaihi salam saying you are our father so intercede for us he will say i committed a sin for which i was expelled back to the earth so go to nuh they will go to nuh alaihi salam 
But he will reply, I supplicated against the people of the earth, so they were destroyed. So go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. They will go to Ibrahim alayhi salam and he will say, I lied three times. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam then added, he did not lie except defending Allah's religion. Ibrahim alayhi salam will say, go to Musa. So they will go to Musa alayhi salam and he will say, I took a life. So go to Isa alayhi salam. So they will go to Isa, but he will say, I was worshipped beside Allah. So go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then they will come to me and I will fall in prostration and Allah will inspire me with statement of gratitude and praise and it will be said, raise your head and ask, you shall be given, intercede and your intercession shall be accepted and that is maqam e mahmood subhanallah which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in verse 69 may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who will get intercession from prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam ameen action points in surah al isra as we mentioned earlier verses 23 to 39 are full of commandments so there is a there is there are lots of action points for us. So let's begin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not assign partners with Allah. Number two, Be dutiful to your parents and do not say them a word of disrespect, not even oof. Give to the kinsman, needy and wayfarer. If you cannot give money, then speak politely. Do not be a miser or a spendthrift. Remember, the spendthrift are brothers of Satan. Do not kill your children in fear of poverty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We shall provide for them as well as for you. Do not go close to zina and al-fawahish, all shameful acts. Verse 32 teaches us, Because these acts leads one to hell. Do not kill someone except for a just cause. Apply Islamic laws of Kisas and Diyah. And whoever is killed wrongfully, we have given his heir the authority to demand Kisas, the law of equality in punishment, or to forgive, or to take Diyah, which is a blood money. But he should not, one should not exceed limits. Surah also teaches us, do not come near the property of orphans and fulfill your covenants. Except to improve it. Only go near to the property of orphans if your intention is to improve it until he attains the age of full strength and fulfill your covenants. Then Surah teaches us we must give full weight and measures. It says, Follow not and witness knows not of which you do not have any knowledge. Do not walk arrogantly on the face of earth. Verse 37. Verily, you will never tear the earth apart and you will never reach the mountains in height. So be humble. Say those words that are the best. Remember, Satan sows the seed of conflict. Verse 53. Verily, Satan sows a state of conflict among them. So say to my slave, that they should say those words that are the best. Perform your right, perform righteous deeds so you could get your book of deeds in your right hand. Remember, we are all writing our book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to write a good book inshallah. Establish five daily prayer and try to say the additional tahajjud salah. Verse 78 is about prayer. Then Surah teaches us, do not despair the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Surah teaches us, follow the teachings of Quran. Because the Quran guides to that which is most just and right. Invoke Allah alone with his best beautiful names. Magnify Allah with all magnificence and do not follow your desires. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, make us among those who follow all the teachings and apply in their life. Amen. Last part of our study of Surah Al-Isra and, and it is Duas. There are a couple of beautiful Duas mentioned in the Surah. Verse 24 where it says about the treatment towards parent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lure to them the wing of submission and humility through mercy and say, My Lord, have mercy on them as they raised me when I was a child. This is a beautiful dua and a gift for our parents, so we must memorize it. Verse 80 is also a dua. As the surah was revealed slightly before migration to Medina, Prophet is saying, O oh Allah, let my entry to the city of Medina be good and my exit from the city of Makkah, Mukarrama, be good and grant me from you a supporting authority. Ameen. Beautiful du'as. Uh, with this, we conclude the study of Surah Al-Isra. Soon, inshallah, we will upload the study of our next Surah, Surah Al-Kahf. Till then, you take care. Be happy and spread the happiness. Barakallahu li barakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.